it really is a cultural revolution to consider just following what your body does naturally and paying attention to that. We live such a busy and scheduled lifestyle in America that just that part alone is radical. If you're actually gonna pay attention to what your body does and not tell it what to do so that you can make your meetings and that you can do this and you can graduate on time. To actually pay attention to your cycle and respond to it. That's radical in itself. My name is Dr. Ann Nolte. I am a family physician. I have an area of concentration in women's health and I'm a certified fertility care medical consultant. I'm Christine Simo Hemphill. I am a OBGYN who is practicing out of um, the Richmond, Virginia area. Part of my practice is working with natural procreative technology, NAPRO. It's a way of helping women with reproductive health issues. The reality is, ever since the creation of the birth control pill and in vitro fertilization, very little attempt is now made to make a diagnosis. Most women's health conditions are just treated with the birth control pill, which is essentially a band-aid that covers up the symptoms. Or in a couple that's trying to conceive, they're told to do this procedure in vitro fertilization, which bypasses the cycle. It was the first time working with doctors where anyone had actually looked at us and said, we have concerns about this and about this and these levels and um, versus just being told everything looks normal, everything seems to be within normal ranges still a big question mark. And also you'd had two surgeries for endometriosis before. That's they'd, right. They'd gone in and scraped everything off and, and um, to have it come up a third time and these folks saying we can actually treat it so it doesn't come back the same way was really encouraging because that's, that's what was really causing so much discomfort for Kristen was, was endometriosis. Mm -hmm. And we said it, even if we don't get pregnant but that can be fixed, let's do that. You know. These are all patients on whom I've been working. The levels of estradiol, which is one of the hormones a woman produces during her cycle, this is looking at the levels around the time of her ovulation when the egg is released. This line in the middle is the normal. This line here is one standard deviation below normal and one standard deviation above. This patient is one who has low hormonal levels throughout the entire course of her menstrual cycle, beginning and end. NAPRO is a very organized system of evaluating women's menstrual cycles and using that information to evaluate hormone levels and also evaluating how she ovulates by ultrasounds. It has a number of applications in women's health. A lot of what we do in NAPRO technology ties into the field of endocrinology. Hormones like estrogen, hormones like progesterone, hormones like thyroid hormone are all things that we look at very closely to make a diagnosis and then correct. There's lots of different treatment methods that they have. So far we have done HCG injections which is because I have both the low estrogen and progesterone, it will help to increase both of them. Now, when you use hormones cooperatively, we use hormones that are chemically identical. We call them bioidentical or natural hormones. And they're used the same way a diabetic uses insulin. Their pancreas doesn't make enough insulin, so they have to take it to remain healthy. People think we're using herbals and supplements and we're not using normal medicine. That's not the case. What we're doing is we're making the woman's cycle go back to working the way it should instead of taking over the cycle and derailing it. So this is showing the correlation with this rising and falling of various hormones throughout the cycle with this um, uterine lining development. So what happens is as this estrogen rises, it causes the lining of the uterus to grow and proliferate. Then that estrogen, it drops dramatically in correlation with this rupture of the follicle here. And then this follicle transitions into the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum produces this hormone progesterone, which you can see rises in this post ovulatory phase here. So after ovulation, this causes this complex matrix of vessels basically to stay in place. That keeps that intact until this corpus luteum starts to break down. And with its breaking down, the lining of the uterus then eventually sheds. Any, any kind of like 
neurological problem that they would normally put a birth control pill on it. We just prick the under the chest. Just prick us. This is Dr. Hemphill. Yeah. Dr. Hemphill is um, our medical surgeon. I want you to raise your hand if you, your mother, your daughter, your sister, or maybe a close friend has ever had problems with heavy menstrual bleeding, irregular cycles, acne, painful menstruation, or even PMS. When patients come to me for NAPRO technology, it's a wide array of different understandings. Um, the ones who have come to me being referred from fertility care practitioners who are already charting the Creighton model fertility care system, they understand what I'm doing. They understand why the chart is important. They understand that there are hormonal abnormalities a lot of times. They understand that the pelvic pain that they've been experiencing for years and years and years is not normal. They understand that the PMS that they've been experiencing is not normal. Now my other patients who come to me referred from other physicians don't have any idea whatsoever. Why is it that in no other area of medicine there's a one-size-fits-all answer for all of your problems? Have you guys ever thought about that? Women's health. You go into the gynecologist, what do they say? Here's the pill. It fixes everything. It's the magic pill. Well, I'm pretty sure that my kids, when they go to the pediatrician, don't get prescribed the same thing every time they go to the pediatrician. And I'm pretty sure my husband doesn't either. So why are we accepting that this magic pill must be the end all, fix all for everything? It's something we don't do in any other area of medicine simply use a medicine to shut down a normally functioning system. Only women's health. The pill teaches us that fertility is a disease. Nowhere else in medicine would you give a medication for a state of health to break a state of health. The body, when it's working correctly, is fertile. Infertility is the disease. Fertility isn't the disease. The medical model has come to view fertility as the disease that you need to overcome at all costs. Hormonal contraception is used as the answer for the irregular bleedings, for the heavy bleedings, for the painful periods, for ovarian cysts, for acne, for breast tenderness, PMS, and a slew of other things. Now, as ridiculous as this sounds, I've even been told by patients that they've been told to go on birth control to get pregnant. <laughs> And you come off and it's supposed to be normal? No, it doesn't work that way. I can tell you that going through a family medicine residency, I was almost not at all exposed to natural family planning. Um, but if you were to offset that by the amount of education that is spent on contraception, uh, it's enormous. Um, mostly in medical education, when you think of women's health, it is contraception. My fellowship, the residency was interviewing for their incoming interns. Somebody made an we should have an x-ray and scan everyone, make sure they have IUDs before they come to the program. Oh my goodness. Because they don't want you to have kids during residency. There is no alternative that is taught from the time you enter medical school uh, to the time of residency, fellowship, going through obstetrics fellowship. You're, you're not ever exposed to an alternative, a viable alternative. In my last year of residency, I was a chief resident. I was about two months away from graduating, and I'm sitting down into this introductory session that I thought was gonna be cake because I'm a gynecologist. I should know all of this, right? I sat down and I learned more in that one hour than I think I learned in the previous eight years of medical school about the female reproductive system. I can't imagine that we have physicians that are out in the world that don't have a clue about what's going on in the female body and that we are failing ourselves as a medical community by not providing that education. So this is showing the cervical canal here. These little ridges inside of the cervical canal on either side are called cervical crypts. Now, the cervical crypts play a really important role in a woman's fertility because every month as this estrogen is rising, they're stimulated by that estrogen produ to produce um, cervical fluid, 
which we call mucus. As that mucus gets to be more clear and stretchy and lubricative, it has um, more of these little canals in it that passively facilitate sperm transportation. These channels also genetically filter. So if there's any abnormality with the sperm as they're going up these channels, they'll get caught in the channels and won't be able to reach the egg. So every woman is walking around with a genetic filter in her. I like to call the hormones that are given in our hormonal contraception artimones because hormones are what your body makes and artimones are um, chemical structures that are similar to what our body makes but aren't the exact same thing. The hormones in the birth control pill are not chemically identical to a woman's natural hormones. They're actually many times stronger and that's where we believe the risk comes from, the increased risk of heart attack, stroke, blood clots, and the proven increased risk of breast cancer, especially with long-term use. Many people think long and hard about the choices, um, about the foods that they put into their bodies, but uh, when I ask, what medications are you taking, they forget that there's an IUD inside, constantly releasing you know, hormonal medication into their body because it's not even seen, uh, in a sense, as a medication. And I'm often surprised that people forget to list birth control among their medications. You have so many people who are, you know, I want organic foods or, I, you know, I don't want to take this medicine or that medicine, but yet um, they settle for the option of the birth control pill to, you know, to fix even just menstrual cycle issues. Um, I feel like it's pretty sad that you know, medical science kind of just like hit a halt and stopped there. One of the funniest ironies, I think, in working with NFP and now with NAPRO is that over the years, I would see so many women um, who are watching what hormones are in their milk and what hormones are in their groceries and how their produce is grown, but would tell me all this and then would have no problem saying, and oh, by the way, I'm doing depo shots or I'm doing the implant in my arm or I'm on the birth control pill. Levonorgestrel, desogesterol, etonogesterol, norgestimate, norethindrone, drospirinone, cyanogest, medroxyprogesterone acetate, ethanodiol diacetate, ethanol estradiol, estradiol valerate, and mesantrol. Those are the ingredients in our hormonal birth control. What are our bodies supposed to be making? Estrogen and progesterone. How hard is it to say estrogen and progesterone? If you particularly are looking at accessing NAPRO technology for irregular cycles, for infertility, for PMS, go create and model. We do work with women who chart other models. Um, However, the full strength of accessing NAPRO is for us to have the fertility care chart because there's certain things in there we're trained to interpret that we can't get from charts on other models. Creighton model fertility care is the method of NFP that is used as the backbone charting for people to access NAPRO technology. There's information on those charts that's not going to come out in other methods because Creighton model is so very standardized. But that standardization lends a strength because I can look at that chart and extract information about the woman's health that I would not get from other methods. These are some of the basic patterns that we look for that emerge in charts. The red here is representing menstrual bleeding. The green is representing dry days that the woman is seeing. Any white that you see is representing any type of mucus that a woman sees throughout her cycle. Um, this can be sticky tacky or cloudy or um, clear stretchy or lubricative mucus. One of the very first patients that I treated when we started here in New York had had five miscarriages in a row. She had gone to one of the leading fertility clinics in the city, her own OBGYN, and even a third physician. She came in with a pile of records this thick, every rare genetic disorder, clotting disorder, tests I hadn't even heard of, all of them normal. And the doctors in the IVF clinic said to her, you just have bad luck. Do IVF. You can see that she has bleeding here at the end of her cycle where she's just having this very light bleeding um, and brown bleeding prior to her more normal heavy to moderate flow. This again is a risk factor for miscarriage. Women can often observe this before a doctor would even test for any abnormalities and really women who are checking all the time are going to be noticing this. She never had a problem getting pregnant. 
but she was losing every single baby very early in pregnancy. She came in, she opened up her Creighton chart, and in her chart was a pattern that indicates a 100% chance of miscarriage. $5 chart with stickers had the diagnosis that her $10 million workup didn't. Mainstream medical approach to miscarriage is that the majority of miscarriages are losses that are necessary because something was wrong. But there was nothing we could do to fix it. Most of the time, doctors won't even look into the source of what was wrong until you've had two or three losses in a row. In a row. That doesn't mean you just had two or three losses, but in a row. I've had patients who have had pregnancy loss, pregnancy loss, pregnancy loss, pregnancy loss. That patient would never get worked up. Yet, she's lost half of her babies. Okay? Now, pro technology doesn't take that approach. If you lose a baby, it's because something was wrong, and we need to find out why, and we need to fix it. <clears throat> I've had six miscarriages in a row. No live births, all before eight weeks. Oh, I'm so sorry. Up. <laughs> so oh, <great>. honey. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> Do you think that there's anything that you could offer? Yeah, I would, I would bet that it's more hormone insufficiency, um, needing to have your hormones treated at the right time and knowing when to do it and getting you ovulating stronger. We had tried to conceive for seven years unsuccessfully. I conceived unexpectedly. I had some spotting somewhere along the the pregnancy um, and was concerned that I was losing it again. They drew my HCG levels. The nurse called me midday and told me that the HCG levels were fine. Dr. Pohelis was standing next to her and said, hold on, let me talk to her. <laughs> um, she said, your HCG levels are fine, but I'm concerned that your progesterone might be low and I think we should run a sample to see. And sure enough, it was low. And she said, I'd like to proceed with with this treatment, if you're comfortable with it. And she said, you should come in right now. And <laughs> um, I came in, I think it was a Saturday morning, and started the progesterone treatments. We met with a doctor in St. Louis. He said, you've got three options, basically. You can do an IUI, and you can do the Clomid, or in vitro fertilization. And that was it, like <laughs> three options. And none of them had to do with really further testing. There was just very little you, you could actually, there were very little options you could do, and that, that, was, um, that was discouraging, I think. What we were told before this was the infertility was unexplained. And um, one of the things about NAPRO that we were found most attractive was that they don't say that. They say, no, infertility is almost always explained that you'd have to do the right kind of work to, to find the answer to what's wrong. We'd actually been told everything looks great. Everything's fine, this is, this is unexplained, right. so let's try this medication or this procedure. And after going down that road a little ways and nothing working, you're like, no, we'd like some more answers. <laughs> going through medical training is a little bit like walking through a minefield if you're Catholic and follow Catholic medical ethics. I was very interested in women's health. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into obstetrics and gynecology or family medicine. When I did my OBGYN rotation and I told one of the supervising doctors, you know, I'm Catholic, my faith is really important to me, I, I can't prescribe the birth control pill, I'm happy to learn everything, work hard. She looked at me and said, then you have no right to be a doctor. And if you're going to be a doctor, then you better not take care of women. Infertility is one of the most painful things that a couple can struggle with. It honestly creates a, a degree of distress comparable to the most severe diagnosis we give people, cancer, terminal illness. A lot of my, my patients have gone to the IVF clinics and have tried that already and they're coming to me because it didn't work. Most of them go to an IVF clinic thinking they're going to get this in-depth evaluation, a diagnosis will be made and treatment will restore their health. They sit down, a few tests are done, 
the doctor says, you have unexplained infertility, we recommend IVF. And it's gonna cost you anywhere from $4,000 to $29,000 per cycle. The foundation of the NAPRO approach is really an educational system that teaches a woman to understand the signs of her fertility. She's been seeing them her whole life. Most women have no idea what they mean. Some women have worried that they mean something bad. In most cases, they're signs of normal health and fertility. And so really, you see, as we teach these women about their cycles, they feel empowered, they express that that things make sense to them that they never understood before. To know that I know what's going on inside of me, to know that I know that this ache or this pain or this or that and everything else, what's going on, or to be able to say, hold on, something's a little off, I need to go to the doctor and not have to wait for something to happen. It's very freeing. So many women actually feel really betrayed by the healthcare system that they were never given an alternative and that a diagnosis was never made. A lot of patients who come to me don't really know what NAPRO technology is about, but they know that it's good health care. It gives you permission to pay attention to your body. Ever since you know, middle school when they introduced reproductive, you know, everything, you know, sex ed and all that kind of stuff, it all started with birth control. What I saw with NAPRO technology was that if I understand what's happening with my body every day, I can make choices that affirm what I believe and what I want to do. And it, it returns the power and the responsibility to me and it takes it, you know, it takes it out of the pharmaceutical company's hands and it takes it out of my doctor's hands. My doctor works with me to help me understand what's going on with my body. Not knowing how your body works or why it works or how birth control really impacts and kind of masks your body's natural response. That I wasn't aware of. It was just like, well, this is what you do. This is what everybody does. You look like you. Thank you.